welcome to TireFlow. I'm Krista Cahill. Today we will explore part two of ABCs of Inversions. Um, today's class is going to be basically how to neutralize the shoulder girdle, how to get the most from your heart and your hands down. So, hope you enjoy. So we're going to start in Navasana. So go ahead and come around and sit with your feet about hip distance on the floor, knees bent, hands placed behind you, fingertips away. So first we need to establish a nice even spread across the shoulder. So go ahead and move the upper arm bones back and let the sides of the chest, the sides of the rib cage move forward and up. And from that, you should start to feel the shoulder blades move in towards the midline, giving you a little bit of support in your chest. And then you can keep one of your hands back just to help maintain the position and take the other hand forward, bringing it about shoulders height and just move the arm bone in and out of the socket a couple times and letting the latissimus and the serratus engage each time the arm moves in and moves out okay and then once you get a really strong connection to that you can just pull the arm all the way into the socket move the shoulder blade into the chest and then add the other arm to it and again just kind of moving that arm in and out of the socket feeling the lat engage and disengage and then once you feel like you've gotten a real strong connection to that, pull both arms back into the sockets. Try to move both shoulder blades down and then in towards your chest. So here is a great opportunity to take a few breaths. We've got a nice open, wide chest, a sense of lift through the crown of the head, and engagement of the subscapular muscle system. Okay, so let's start to work with adding the legs. Instead of just rounding the back to take the legs up, I want you to really strongly integrate those arms into the sockets. Lean the whole torso back. So from the very bottom of the spine all the way through the crown of the head, lean it back in one even plane. And let one of your feet start to float, bringing it parallel so the toes and the knee are in one straight line. And then see if you can re-lift the chest, drop the shoulder blades down and move them in and up one more time. Okay, if you feel like this is enough, you stay here. If you want to go a little bit further, you add the other leg to it. Now both shin bones are parallel, knees are in line with the feet, arms are in line with the shoulders and you're drawing the arms back into the sockets. Once you get that lift in your chest and you're balanced here, for most of you, you'll be able to straighten the legs, keeping the spine exactly the same, spreading and extending through the toes, but drawing the arms back into the shoulder sockets. So just stay here for a couple breaths again, nice open chest, very conducive to deep breathing. And then you'll bring your feet down and you'll hug your knees in towards your chest. Okay, so that will pretty much give you a sense of what the shoulder girdle does as you're working through Navasana. And now we'll take it through to plank pose. So come out onto your hands and your knees. Place the hands to the shoulders distance apart. And just a couple times, working with the two different variations, the arms being completely extended from the socket of the shoulder, the upper back is rounded, or the arms drawing all the way into the socket of the shoulder and the chest maximum and spacious. Rounding the back, arms out of the sockets, arms in the sockets, maximum expansion. So see if you can do that a couple times. Just feeling the very two ends of the spectrum. And then come to a place where the arms feel comfortably in the sockets. You can grip the mat with your fingertips and start to guide the shoulder blades down off your neck. And then use the more challenging part. Take the very bottom tip of the shoulder blade and draw it down into your chest. So you're getting one more time that engagement of the subscapular muscle system. Then take your tailbone and draw it into the body. So you're getting a little bit of a sideways lifting and the engagement of the core. So from here, if this is enough, you can just step the knees back and start to draw the chest forward with the knees on the ground. If you can go all the way into plank pose, curl the toes, lift the knees up. And one more time, notice if you're pressing the floor away, rounding your upper back. Try to allow the arms to come all the way up into the sockets of the shoulders. Draw the shoulder blades down and maybe into your chest as the sides of the waist lift up, and then you look forward, chin extends, side waist lift, and then downward facing dog. So you can draw it all the way back, not changing one part of that shoulder girdle. 
And then again, shift forward into plank. Let the arms slide energetically up into the sockets. Feel the shoulder blades move down and in. Sides of the waist resist up. Tailbone towards your heels. Chin forward. One more wide breath across the throat. And then lift the hips. Try not to change the shoulders. Downward facing dog. And then come down and take a child's pose. Couple breaths here. Now breathing into the back body. And then we'll come up. So we're going to explore it in the handstand position. Come up into down dog, hands shoulders distance, fingertips grip the mat. And see if you can resist that inner arm forward as you lift the knees and take the hips up and back. Tiptoe the feet in. Bring the shoulders all the way over your wrists. Okay, even if you have to bend the knees a little bit, that's completely fine. Just get the shoulders all the way up forward. You're going to take a couple turns at pushing the arms into and out of the sockets of the shoulders. Into and out. And then let the arms come all the way into the sockets of the shoulders. See if you can move the shape shoulder blades down and then in towards your chest. Keeping the collarbones wide, lift your leg. Keep that leg extended on the same parallel line as the floor. Bend the standing knee. And as you hold the mat with your fingertips, it's going to start to instigate that broadening of the chest. Keep it and take a couple hops. It doesn't have to be high. Just a little exploratory lift. Keeping the chest forward and wide. Once you find the balance, squeeze your fingertips into the floor. Soften the arms into the socket. See if you can move the shoulder blades towards your waist, and then the shoulder blade tips gently in towards your chest. Then draw the sides of the waist towards the front of the mat, tailbone towards your heels, and take one more breath. You can also use the wall. And then coming down. This time, separate the feet a distance apart. Grab a hold of the elbows, and let the shoulders release here. your hips, squeeze the elbows together, and inhale, stand over. Thank you so much.